Now step two is, once we have our computed altitude, also from this triangle, we can get the direction that the sun, um, the GP, um, should have been on the Earth's surface from us. We can get a, 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 true, a true bearing. So then what we do is we go onto a flat plotting sheet of just Latin lawn lines, and we plot our assumed position, so this is 25 north, 65 west. So our assumed position is right here. And we've computed that the sun is, say, a direction of 140 from where we are. So this is two sun. Then what we do, and very um, just talking simplistically here, there's more corrections that go into this, is we compare the difference between the computed altitude and what we actually observed with our sextant. And if the angle that we actually observed is smaller than the computed altitude, then we are that distance away from the sun. And that distance being in usually just a few arc minutes. So if we're, uh, if we're, if the angle is five arc minutes, if the observed angle is five arc minutes less than the computed, then we are five arc minutes or five miles away from our assumed position. And so that'll put us on some line perpendicular to the direction of the sun that is five miles, that passes within five miles of our assumed position. And this is known as an LOP, a line of position. This line of, this LOP is actually part of a big circle, remember? We drew this circle, we said we were 10 degrees away, so we're somewhere on a circle 600 miles. But usually this circle is so large that we can just approximate a segment of it as a line, and it's a line of position. If, on the other hand, our observed altitude was larger than the computed, say it was two arc minutes larger than the computed, then we'd be two miles, we'd be on a line of position somewhere two miles closer to the sun. And that line of position would pass within two miles of our assumed position, and we draw that LOP at 90 degrees to the vector going to the sun. So that is essentially it as far as getting a line of position. Now, of course, that still doesn't fix our position. To fix our position, we need to do all this over again for another celestial body that's at a different, that's at a different bearing than the sun was. And one way we can do that is simply to wait a few hours for the sun to move. That's a sunning, running sun fix, sun run sun, so that we can get the we can get the sun bearing, say, two zero zero in the afternoon. Then we'll have another line of position we can cross with it, and then we can fix our position. Now this was just a very cursory look at the overall theory behind celestial navigation. If you want to get into all the details. Uh, the best resource I have found that I know of on the subject is a book called Common Sense Celestial Navigation by Hewitt Schlereth. Um, and um, he, he explains uh, the theory also how to use the site reduction tables um, and what I think in, in very, in basically the, the simplest and most easy to understand terms uh, as possible with a subject that's, that's uh, rather tedious and complex. As I have said, I'm, I'm not going to go through all the manual tabulations here. Uh, what I'm going to use to um, compute my LOPs, uh, lines of position, uh, for my morning round of sites is this Celesticomp 5, uh, which is just a, a pre-programmed pocket computer. Um, and so, so let's just get right into this here. So we want to compute an LOP, so we compute celestial LOPs. Enter. New fix. Yes. Review data. Yes. Day. It is the 26th of November. Enter. Month. 11. November. This is 2017. Our assumed latitude is 25 degrees 2 minutes north. And assumed longitude is 64 420 uh, degrees west. Ah, uh, now, eye height. Uh, this is... Um, 
this is the height the height of your eye above the horizon or above the water. I'm going to say about seven feet. Uh, when you go through the tables, this will be what's known as your dip correction. Uh, it's the fact that you're not actually at the at sea level um, observing the sun. You're up some height from it. So we'll enter in seven feet for that. And remember we talked about earlier the index correction on the sextant. Uh, ours is zero, so that's easy. And speed, eh, it's more like about two knots. And we've been doing about, I'm roughly just moving off to the east at about two knots here. You can hear the sails slatting. We have hardly any wind. Um, and we'll say fixed time, 1,500 hours. That's about when we did the sights. So we're all done with that. So then it'll prompt you shot time. So let's enter in the time of our first observation, which was 15 hours, 4 minutes, 18 seconds. Okay? And the sextant altitude was 41 degrees, 17.6 minutes. And body zero was sun, it's the lower limb of the sun. And there, there's a little card on the back that gives you the codes there. And now it's just, it's busy, it's thinking. Okay, so this is our HC. Remember, our computed altitude. We should have observed 41, point, 41 degrees, 31.6 minutes uh, with our sextant. And we weren't quite at that. And remember, we, we said the LOP will be toward or away from our assumed position by some number of arc arc minutes. In this case, it's 1.5. So this is so the sextant is telling us that we are 1.5 nautical miles um, away from our assumed position, and the ZN that's the direction to the sun 160.5 degrees. Um, that's the direction to the sun. Okay, so let's enter that. Yes, let's accept the LOP. And then we just continue here with the next one. About one mile away. And the last one was six tenths of a mile away. So that's fairly tight. That's pretty pretty good shooting there. Um, and um, that's another reason why you want to take uh, several observations. I would say three to five observations at any given time for a given body. It's so you can get an idea of the variance here. Uh, and that gives you an idea of how accurate your shooting is. Um, so we're back with our afternoon round of sights. And just do the last one here. 1800 hours, three minutes, four seconds. Whoops, four minutes, four seconds. Oh, four, oh, four. And 35 degrees. And 29.7 was the observed altitude. And we're minus 2.2 miles. And the Z is 214. And yes, we'll accept the LOP. Uh, another thing about doing several observations of one body, if you see one of them is way out, like one of them is, is 20 miles away, and all the other ones are about 2 miles away, then um, discard that observation. Um, but uh, only if it's, if it's clearly way out, then you probably made a mistake. You misread your watch or misread the sextant or something. All right, so now what we can do is we have, uh, is we have uh, two sets of LOPs, and the latter set are at a, a pretty good angle to the earlier set. So we can compute a running sun fix. Now, if you were going to do this uh, on paper, what you'd be doing here what you do is you take your morning LOP and you run it by a vector which is your course and speed between the observations. So if you think you, you know, you've been doing three, so we've been only doing about two knots off to the east, then we would have to run our morning LOP at two knots for the past three hours. So what's that? Six miles to the east. Um, because you know you've moved 
because you've added some information that you have moved since the morning. And so that, that'll become your updated LOP. And then you, you cross your updated LOP against the, uh, the afternoon LOPs. Okay, so, uh, but what we're not going to do, as I said, what we're not going to do all this manually. But we're going to let the Celesta comp computer fix for us. Lat long fix, yes. LOPs compute, yes. Now it reminds you, use good cuts. That means make sure those LOPs uh, between the morning and the afternoon, or if you're shooting different bodies like the sun and the moon, that you have a good angle there. Try to get at least about 45 degrees. No, we're not going to cancel any LOPs, and now it's thinking. So it says our fixed latitude is 25 degrees, 3.5 minutes north, and our longitude is 64 degrees, 39.7 minutes west. All right, and so let's consult the GPS here. And the GPS is saying that we are at 25 degrees, 3.2 minutes north, and 64 degrees, 37 minutes west. So latitude-wise, we're pretty much right on. And longitude, uh, we we're, off, we're off by a couple of miles there, uh, 39 to 37. Um, so our, our site was a couple miles off. Um, generally with Celestial, if you, if you can consistently get within two miles of where you are, you're, you're pretty good at it. Um, again, as I said, I, I haven't practiced this in a while. Uh, but, um, and particularly if you have good conditions, a lot of times you can get, you can get reliably within about a mile. Uh, but again, you have to be in pretty good practice. Um, in rough weather, Generally, if you can get within about five miles of where you are, um, you're doing pretty well. So as you can see, um, even with the help of this computer here, uh, it's still quite a bit of work um, to work out uh, a fix using celestial navigation. And, um, and of course, it's not nearly as accurate as GPS. So uh, uh, GPS was, is just, it's, it's really quite a miracle. And uh, I hope if anything, uh, you, you, uh, you have a new, a new appreciation for this uh, modern navigational technology that we all enjoy. So the question, of course, we have to address here is why bother learning celestial navigation? Um, current count is I have four GPS receivers on this boat. I have a Mushroom GPS receiver which feeds into my radio, which also has the AIS receiver. Um, I have this little Garmin handheld uh, GPS receiver which runs on batteries. I have the USB uh, GPS receiver which plugs into my computer which I use for OpenCPN. And my waterproof camera also has a GPS receiver in it. Um, so I'm not too worried about uh, getting lost out here. Um, now, I suppose it is possible that the global positioning system could go down or malfunction, or these days uh, could be hacked. I don't know enough about it to, whether, to know whether that's even remotely possible. But uh, if you are paranoid about, uh, about uh, computer hackers or whatnot, um, Celestial Navigation does provide you with a completely independent means of fixing your position at sea. Other than that, Celestial Navigation is basically an elective course for, for a sailor. Um, it's something that will make you a more knowledgeable, well-rounded sailor. It will make you a better sailor, but it's not necessary to learn it, I would say. Otherwise, Celestial Navigation is pretty cool. I think sextants are beautiful instruments, and uh, looking at the sun and the stars never hurts. 